Hello and welcome to Learn Do Become Radio. This is episode 55. Today we're talking about how we're actually going to declutter our emotions. We talk a lot about how to get rid of clutter, especially in our Steps to Everyday Productivity program. But today we're going a little bit deeper and I have a three-part recording. It was me before a coaching session, immediately after the coaching session, and then two weeks later reporting back. I was going through a whole lot, which you're going to hear about, and I'm hopeful that if you are feeling stressed or anxious or overwhelmed or (laughs) frustrated or (laughs) angry or whatever it might be, that today's podcast is going to give you a lift. Thank you for joining us and you can find everything on the show notes page learn do become.com forward slash episode 55. All right. I don't know if I'm actually ever going to publish this, but it is Tuesday, April 30th, 2019 at 10 5 AM. In 25 minutes, I have a meeting with a coach from the Feeling Good Institute. I am very excited and nervous. I've actually been waiting for this appointment for like two weeks. And I want to share a little bit about why I scheduled the appointment, what my plan is for today, what I've done to prepare, and where I'm hoping this will go. So, I don't even remember what I just said. I'll try to go in that order. Okay, so the reason why I scheduled this is because I noticed that I had more anxiety than I could handle on my own. Now, it's not debilitating. I'm very functional. I'm generally happy. Things are going well. Like, things are going really well in my life. But I got these red rashes a while ago, and I've been actually, you know, doing a lot of work in the last couple of weeks, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to reach out to someone from the Feeling Good Institute because I've listened to all of Dr. David Byrne's podcasts and read all of his books, and I know he isn't practicing anymore, but I know he has others who are. So I reached out to a couple. Anyway, I got this appointment. But I met for a 15-minute consult with this particular um, coach, and I just said, I have these weird rashes, I don't know why, and things are going well, but I want to learn how to be even more mentally healthy. It's really important for me. And he just made one quick comment before we closed up our 15-minute session, but he said, sounds like there might be some hidden emotion there. And then he's like, this is going to be great. I'm really looking forward to working with you. And we kind of closed up. And I thought, hidden emotion? What hidden emotion do I have? (laughs) Like, I'm very open. I'm always talking with Eric about things. I'm writing in my journal all the time. And I was thinking, what could my hidden emotions be? So I had an evening where I was all alone. And I sat down with a notebook. And I thought, okay, the way that they typically tell you how to understand what's happening in your head is you pick one moment when you felt incredibly anxious and you write down the thoughts that were in your head at that moment. So I thought back to about two weeks prior to that when I felt a ton of anxiety and I started writing. (laughs) I wrote like eight to ten pages of all these things that were inside me that I'd never shared with anybody because I had reasons, you know, I just thought I don't want to upset people or it's really dumb. I feel this way, or I don't think there's a purpose or I shouldn't feel this way. I felt all this guilt. Anyway, so I wrote all these pages and cried a lot as I wrote it, (laughs) kind of had a little therapy session alone. And I realized, wow, I have a lot of stuff that I haven't processed and realized that this meeting that I'm having today, I think is actually going to be extremely helpful. So what I've been doing over the past couple of weeks to prepare for this is taking one of my areas of hidden emotion at a time, talking with Eric about it, listening to podcasts about it, reading books about it, listening to talks from people at church about it, doing all kinds of research to learn and figure out where is it that my head is kind of off <laughs> and taking good notes and really studying. So I feel like the student really prepared for today's session. But then I did a couple other things to prepare. I got actually got my papers in front of me. So um, the coach sent me a copy of the mood log, which is it's a daily mood log that David Burns created. It's actually in his book called When Panic Attacks. It's wonderful. And I've used it multiple times, but I created it and I put it on a little sheet of paper, just kind of drew it again, (laughs) put it on a sheet of notebook paper in front of me. But at the very, very top, it asks you to list the emotions you're feeling 
and what percent you're feeling, you know, and it's not like they have to add up to 100. It's just out of 100%, you know, what would you feel? So I'll just read through what mine says right now. And then maybe I'll record after I'm done (laughs) with today's session. So okay, uh, first emotion is sad. I'm actually 0% sad. I'm, I'm not sad. I'm really actually content with a lot of things in my life. And I'm optimistic. And I feel not sad. (laughs) Okay. So I'm a zero there. Anxious though, I'm like 50%. And a lot of it I think is anxiety that I didn't even really want to acknowledge. But if I actually really think about it, I'm about 50% anxious. Okay. Guilty, 75% guilty. Not because I've committed a crime or done something horrible, but I feel obligated to do certain things that I'm not obligated to do. And I have a lot of guilt there. So 75%. Um, Inferior, 80%. Oh my goodness. And I feel really silly saying this on a podcast, but I feel 80% inferior. And part of me thinks, how awful is that? I know I'm valuable to God. I know I'm valuable to my family. I know that my value as a person doesn't depend on externals or I don't need to compare myself to other people. You know, I have all these thoughts swirling in my head, but those are the things that are kind of hurting me right now. I do feel that way, the way that I'm interpreting the world and my life and my goals and where I am in relation to where I want to be in multiple areas, (laughs) 80% inferior. And then lonely. Oh, this one's hard too. I'm like 80% lonely. Oh, and I know it seems weird because I have hundreds of thousands of people I connect with online, but a lot of the things that I feel like I wish I could talk about or I need to talk about, I just don't know where to put that because I don't want to put it out online (laughs) and I don't want to bother people. And it's not like you can just like walk up to someone and say, Hey, (laughs) I'm lonely (laughs) and I don't want a whole bunch of lunch invitations because I'm totally an introvert, (laughs) but yeah, I'm like 80% lonely. And then embarrassed, 50%. (sighs) Embarrassed about being (laughs) lonely and inferior. (laughs) Embarrassed about wishing that I could do more than I can. Um, uh, There's a lot under there. Hopeless, I'm zero. Actually, very hopeful. So I am scheduled this call. I feel really hopeful. Um, Frustrated like 80%. And again, it's not like a conscious frustration. It's like under the scenes frustration. (laughs) There's some things that are really frustrating me. Um, angry. Ugh, this one was hard. I put 50% up to a hundred percent because I think it's hidden. You know, I've always believed that we don't need to feel angry because like, I believe that God takes that and I don't have to carry it. And I feel like I am a really forgiving person. Like I don't hold grudges. Rarely do I feel like I have to criticize or complain about someone because I recognize that everyone's at their own place in their life. So generally, like I never yell. I'm not an angry person. I don't even feel like I'm walking around in a huff. Like I'm actually pretty happy. I don't feel angry, but I think that there's like some hidden anger of things that have happened in the past that I've been angry about, but I never felt like I could talk about it. So I just kind of covered it up. So anyway, we're going to talk through some of that, hopefully. Uh, Scared, like I put scared on there. It wasn't on there (laughs) initially. I think that goes with anxiety. Um, Scared, I have 50 to 80%. Again, I feel like it's dumb, but I feel like what I'm working towards and the vision of what I want to create, and I compare it (laughs) with my inadequacies, and I think about what happens when I put myself out there. (laughs) I get scared. So anyway, so those are all my befores. I couldn't think of any other emotions I was feeling. I think that pretty much covers it. (laughs) I think we've got plenty to work with. So those are my befores. Then the goals that you put afterwards, what percent do you want? Now I put zeros on all of them because genuinely I think I do want zeros. I've heard enough of uh, David Burns live sessions that I know that sometimes people will say like, oh, I think I could be like 10% anxious or 5% anxious, but then they always get to zero at the end. So I'm just going to start with zeros because the first thing that they typically ask is, and I'm, the reason I'm sharing all this because I'm hoping maybe you could go along with me, kind of do this exercise as well. 
Um, but the reason why they ask is because when you're feeling <clears throat> anxious, guilty, inferior, lonely, embarrassed, hopeless, frustrated, angry, scared, whatever, when you're having those feelings, typically they represent something really good about you. Like, I recognize I really care about people and about my mission and about my family and about serving God. Like, I really care. I don't want to put myself out there to try to seem superior to other people. I don't want to draw attention to myself. Like, I really don't like that at all. Um, I want to be kind. I want to be accommodating. I want to be a support. And when your brain knows that you want to do all these great things, then sometimes we feel like those feelings we have are because they are representing something good. So we don't want to let go of those because we feel like we also need to let go of that goodness. So I understand that enough, but I feel like, oh, now I need to talk through all of it and figure out what are the negative thoughts and the distortions that are causing that. Because I honestly believe, like the reason where I want to go from here, I honestly believe that if I can figure out what my brain is doing behind the scenes that's holding on to all of these negative feelings, I feel like that's going to set me up to be able to really expand into my mission, to be able to serve at a deeper level, to step up with more confidence, to put myself out there more. All these things I've been wanting to do, but I've just been holding back. I think it's because of what's going on in my head. So to prepare for this call, <clears throat> that's now happening in 14 minutes. <laughs> my hands are getting kind of sweaty. I actually made a little brainstorm. I have another sheet of paper where I made a brainstorm and I identified four things that are causing all of that stress. And it's kind of like four categories. And I'm not gonna share what they are because it's kind of personal stuff that I really don't want to put online. But I wrote down four words <laughs> and put them in little brainstorm bubbles. And then I wrote all the details out around them. I'm also going to, in the next few minutes, sit down and just kind of write the basic points that I need to share with my coach because I don't want to have to tell the whole story of my last like 20 years of my life, <laughs> my last 40 years of my life ever since I was little. I don't want to go through all of that, but I feel like I need to just get the bullets so I don't ramble. But I'll tell you like one. This is so funny. I was telling Eric how I feel like I'm a small behind the scenes person who isn't meant to step out in the spotlight. I mean, that's kind of how I have wired my brain to look at myself. And I was thinking back, like, what was it that caused this? Why do I think of myself like this? And I know it's kind of a joke, like, oh, you go back to your childhood. <laughs> but we do have a story when I was, I think I was nine, eight, no, I was eight years old. And our school did a play and I was in a second and third grade combination class. And I was one of the younger ones. I was in second grade and we were doing Sing Ho for a Prince. So it was like Sleeping Beauty. And I remember when the teacher did tryouts, she asked everyone to come up and it was kind of like you were in the classroom alone, but she and another teacher were there and people out in the hall, we could kind of hear you. And you had to sing Do a Deer <laughs> from The Sound of Music. So I'm eight years old and I remember walking into this audition. Now I wanted more than anything to have one of the lead roles. There were like six or seven lead roles. As an eight-year-old girl, I loved, I just loved the idea of getting to do one of these roles. And, but I was so shy. I was so incredibly shy. And so I remember I sang the song, but I sang it really quietly and shyly, like, reflecting who I was and how I saw myself and I was cast as one of the ladies in waiting so there were like four or five of us and I had this long blue taffeta skirt and I stood in the background and I swayed back and forth and sang the you know group choral songs but I didn't have any speaking lines or any singing line singing parts alone and I watched for you know months I knew every line in the play and when I was like 
home alone or even driving in the car with my family, I was singing. I, I knew everything. And I was singing confidently and I was pretending like I was that person. <laughs> like one of the fairies or whatever. So behind the scenes and at home, I was singing. And then I would get to school and I was the girl in the background not saying a word and trying not to stand out and totally embarrassed and wishing that I could be out there. I mean, isn't that funny? But like, I was talking to Eric about this the other day. I said, it's so funny, but it was like that moment in my childhood where I categorized myself as, April, you don't belong out there on the stage and you don't have what it takes to be out there. And now as a 40 year old woman, <laughs> mother of four children, who's leading this online platform, I still see myself like that. I'm still thinking, well, who are the people out front that I can hide behind? And maybe what can I do to be present enough that I'm participating, but not so present that people are gonna look at me? Ah, okay, so anyway. <laughs> It's just these little stories and things like that. And I've got hundreds of those kinds of things. I'm sure you do too. All right, so I'm going to close this up now. Just as I'm looking at this mood log, and I'm looking at the sheet and my 10 pages of all of my scribblings. I feel like I can finally see a path out of that. And I'm hopeful. And I just bring this up because I know that I'm not the only person who has stories in her head. In fact, I don't think I've ever met anyone who hasn't had stories in their head that were holding them back in some way or another. Because sometimes you don't even know and you go to different levels and different levels and different levels. So I just encourage you, if you are feeling anything in relation to feeling sad or anxious or guilty, inferior, lonely, embarrassed, hopeless, frustrated, angry, scared, I challenge you to start making progress and take steps to actually change that because I think it's going to be awesome for all of us. And I honestly, no matter how organized you are and no matter how awesome your command central is <laughs> and no matter if your emails are at zero and you are on your game and there is no paper anywhere, like even though you have all of that in place, and even if you have millions of dollars and live in your dream home and have anything you could ever want, if your head isn't in alignment with what God really has for you, you're going to feel some of these things that's going to hold you back, just like it's been holding me back. <laughs> All right, I'll close up now. I'm sitting here in the car and I just finished my it's a nearly two hour session with my coach oh my goodness i have so many exciting thoughts in my head and i wanted to share some of the main things i learned but i haven't had time to really process all of it yet i'm i have some homework i need to do but i wanted to capture my excitement and just the peaceful feeling i have right now and so there are cars driving by and all that stuff that i just thought let me just pull out my laptop and let me just record this really quick because I'm thrilled about this. And just as far as why I'm sharing this and where I want to go with this, number one, I see myself as someone who's willing to help pave the way for our community. If you are struggling with any kinds of stress or anxiety or hidden emotions or anything like that, which I'm pretty sure you are, and you want to move forward, I want to help you to see what I've been doing and just give you some ideas of things that can help you. Also, I'm pretty serious about taking additional training in the future to learn more about this Team CBT, which is the Cognitive Behavioral Therapy that I adore. And this is what Dr. David Burns does because I talk about him all the time. Like I've been talking about him for years now because while I haven't totally gotten over all the things that I'm struggling with, I see the path. And I assume that this is how people feel when they come into our STEP program, when they're like, okay, I might not have everything totally under control right now, but I see how April's doing it and how her team's doing it and how the community Learn to Become is doing it. And I think I can get there. So I think I feel something really similar. But I just wanna share what we did in this session. And I wanna tell you, 
I am feeling so much better, like a weight has lifted off my shoulders. And even though I'm not done with my homework and I still need to do some follow-up, I feel like relief mentally that I haven't felt in years. I, I don't know if I've ever felt this light in my life, which is a pretty big deal considering I have a really good life in so many ways. So I just want to share what happened. So first of all, I met with my coach. Um, his name is Mike Christensen, so I'll just uh, refer to him as Mike. <laughs> so I met with him and we're just via Skype, so just over the computer. And the first thing that I um, did was just showed him my homework. So I showed him all the notes I'd taken. I had bullet points put together saying, here's my outcome vision. Here's how I want to feel by the end of this. Here's what I've done so far on my mood log. Here's what I've put together. And then I probably talked for like half an hour and just walked through and explained to him all the facets of what was happening. I wanted to give him enough information that he could understand why I was feeling this stress, but not so much information that I just felt like I was, you know, dumping stuff all over. So that was, that was the, the, the goal there. So he, first of all, did a great job listening. Now with Team CBT, the CBT Cognitive Behavioral Therapy team, the T stands for testing, and that's where you actually write down what percentage you're feeling. At least I think I'm saying all this right. <laughs> you know, I talked about how you actually look and you test on how you're feeling, what emotions you have, what percentage, things like that. The E is empathy, A is agenda setting, and M is methods. So today we got through the T and the E. So we done kind of the testing and we did a little more of that, which I'll explain in a minute. And then the empathy, that's just the part where as the counselor, he was just listening and letting me just talk. And then he's repeating back some of the things he's hearing and he's pulling out insights. And after I spoke, I was taking notes a little bit on what he said in response. After I spoke and I told him all the things that I was stressed about and frustrated about <laughs> and feeling anxious about, he said, you know, I can see that you feel trapped in many ways. Like you feel like you're kind of in prison and not in prison like, oh, I don't love my marriage or I don't love my life, but just emotionally, I've kind of trapped myself where I can't move one way or the other because I'm gonna hurt someone either way, something like that. A lot of things, and I'm not gonna go to all the detail because I really don't wanna put everything out online, but he really acknowledged that there were a lot of beautiful feelings that I have, compassion and love and wanting to nurture and wanting to serve and wanting to protect my family and wanting to do a good job, and then I kind of was, was trapped at the moment and so just that empathy where he could understand everything that's been happening with my life with transitions over the past several years and losing my mom and stepping into my calling and you know just some of the challenges that I've had to experience or I have experienced over the past he really acknowledged that and helped me to see that I was okay and I was normal and that there was a lot of good that would come out of this and there was already a lot of good that was happening and so just having someone else there to listen I mean it's huge and I do have people in my life who listen but you know it's different when I think you're working with a specific coach and sometimes if you think well if I can't work with a coach right now like I never have before this is my first time really even just being able to talk with God and feel God's love and empathy for you I think is huge as well so that was the first part and then we didn't get all the way to the agenda setting, but we went through the next part. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I wanna share with you what we did. We looked at my cluster, the four areas that I was feeling concerned about, and he reviewed them and then he said, okay, where would you like to start? Which one of these? So I looked at them and found the one that was like most painful to me. And I said, okay, let's start here. And I said, because I think if I can get this one figured out, I think the other ones, will kind of sort themselves out a little bit. And this is very similar actually to what I do professionally, helping people get out of piles. People will say, well, where do I start? My whole house is a mess. I don't even know where to start. And I just say, think of your projects like dominoes. Which one, if you tackled that one first, would make everything else easier? Like if you're always in your kitchen, you're always with your family in the kitchen and the kitchen is awful. <laughs> Nobody can eat and you have school papers everywhere and it's just a mess. Start in the kitchen, start where you are all the time. Or if it's something like, oh, financially, I've just got to get my budget 
working and just stop the bleeding of all the money that's slipping through the cracks. If it's something like that, fine, do that first because then it's gonna give you the ability to breathe while you're decluttering, right? So the idea is that you think of your problems like dominoes and then you work from the biggest to the smallest. I know sometimes people just want a quick win and knock something out and that's fine, but really I've found the best success has been to start with the biggest one. So we started with the biggest one and I shared you know, where all my challenges were. <laughs> and then this is what he asked. Okay, tell me one experience, one upsetting event that we can walk through. We don't want to think about the problem generally or philosophically. We want to think about one time when this was on your mind and it was concerning you. And I said, okay, it was when we were on spring break. And he's like, okay, where were you? What time of day was it? Who were you with? What were you doing? I'm like, okay, well, we're out on a walk and I'm with all my family and we are walking the dogs and I'm kind of telling him like, he want to know everything about the moment so I could put myself into the moment. And then we actually did the <clears throat> mood log type thing again. And we went through how sad were you? How anxious, guilty, right? All of those things, inferior, lonely, embarrassed, frustrated, angry. We went through those again. And what was interesting is they were a little different than the ones I described prior to the call. Like I was sad. I was like 50% sad and, you know, anxious. I was like hundred percent anxious. Like I went through and explained like embarrassed zero, you know, inferior zero. Like, so I went through and just explained I lonely. I was like hundred frustrated, 80 angry, hundred. So I'm just looking at my little paper right now, reading that to you. So I went through and explained, okay, these are all the feelings I had. And then what was so interesting to me is we did not jump in and start solving these things. Like we haven't even gotten to that part yet. That's, that's something I'm going to be working on with homework and then um, in a future session. But we spent like an hour, and I know this seems crazy because you're thinking, wait, what? How much time do we have to spend on this? But we spent an hour going through the thoughts that were in my mind at the time, and then we did this positive reframe. And I want to tell you a little bit more about that because I think that's why I'm feeling so good right now. Oh my gosh. Like, I almost want to cry out of relief because... I didn't, I didn't realize what I was carrying. Like, and the thing is, sometimes I feel even like guilty talking about my life because I know other people who are living in like abusive homes or who like could hardly afford food to feed their family. Like I know there are situations that are so much harder than mine. So I feel like, oh, first world problem. Why am I even complaining? But what I'm learning is that when you're going through something hard, like it's real and it's hard for you, even if it wouldn't be hard for someone else. So I'm going to be easy on myself <laughs> and not blame myself <laughs> for this, but I'm hoping if I can at least use what I'm going through to help you, that that'll be good. Okay. So let me just move on a little bit and tell you a little bit more. <laughs> and then the car is getting hot. So I'm going <laughs> to go on a little drive. Okay. So first we looked at the, the negative thoughts that were happening. So he's like, all right, you're feeling all of these feelings. Let's, let's talk about it. So sad. We just took, took them one at a time. Sad, 50%. What were the negative thoughts that were in your head that were causing you to feel sad? What were you thinking? And I was like, well, I thought this and this and this and this. And I, I, you know, and he kind of pushed me like, what were those thoughts? And then I had to write each one down, like with a pen and paper. You're not typing it. You're not just talking about it. You actually write it down. So I wrote down like four thoughts as, as to why I was feeling so sad. And then usually in that book, When Panic Attacks, they ask, and then I feel so funny. I just have to pause right now. I feel like even silly talking about this, like I'm taking everyone through therapy. If you don't like this, or you don't need it. Just turn it off. Okay. But I, I'm speaking to the people who need me right now. <laughs> okay. So, cause this is gold. I'm just telling you right here. This is gold. All right. <laughs> so usually in the book, it says like, what percentage do you believe this? But then he said, you know, for some people who struggle with feeling anxious, that's more of a intellectual question. So he said, you could also ask, um, how intense is this feeling? Right. Um, how upsetting is it to you? So that's the one we did for me. How upsetting is this? Statement one, thought one, how upsetting, like 80%. Statement two, 100%, like all of them were 100, <laughs> like super upsetting. Like, you know, I had some tissue next to me because they were a little bit crying because I was so upset by these thoughts. So we wrote them all down. And then we went to the next one, anxious. Why were you anxious? What were you thinking? Guilty, why were you feeling guilty? You know, and I wrote them down. 
all my fault. I should have said something. I should have done something. Like, why did I let this happen? You know, I have all these things. Um, anyway, went through lonely, embarrassed, frustrated, angry. Uh, actually, we didn't get to all the rest of them. That's my homework <laughs> to go through the rest. Why was I feeling lonely? What was the thought at that moment? So you actually have to ask yourself, what was I thinking at each point? How upsetting was it? So then at the end, you have this list of thoughts and next to it, you have a percentage. So I have like, I don't know, 15 negative thoughts. And then I have like 80 to 100% for all of them in the next column. Okay. But then what we did, and this is awesome. So I want to pull up my other paper is we said, okay, hang on a second. He said, if we had a magic button right now and you could push that magic button and make all of these thoughts and feelings go away, would you do it? And this is where I'm like, well, yeah, sure. I, I want to feel relief from this. I don't like feeling anxious and sad and all of this. But then I was like, well, the part of me doesn't want to push it because I don't want all of these things I value to go away. And this is where we then went to the next part, <laughs> which I'm pulling up now. Okay. So we made a little chart and this is called the positive reframe. And he said, okay, we're going to talk about the advantages to feeling this way. And then we're going to talk about the values that are represented. So for advantages, it's like, how is this emotion helping me? And what does this say about me then for values about my character? Oh my gosh. So then we went through just three of them. We went through sad, anxious, and guilty. Like the fact that I feel sad shows I really care. <laughs> it shows I'm empathetic. It shows that I'm loyal, like a lot of things like that. So we just dug into this situation and talked about it. The fact that I'm anxious, we talked about this for like 20 minutes. Um, it protects me. It uh, protects me from uncomfortable encounters. It protects me from toxic relationships. It protects me from awkward situations. It prepares me to not make things worse. Um, it says that, hey, I'm taking care of myself. I'm worth taking care of. Um, it shows I'm alert and responsible. I'm sensitive, like all these things. Um, it, it sh I don't feel safe at the time, so it shows I'm like trying to keep myself safe. Things like that. Um, guilty, <laughs> being guilty shows like I'm still a good person. I have a conscience, I'm caring. My motives are good, I have a high standard. Um, my reputation's important to me. I'm honest with myself, I have integrity. Uh, so things like that, like it was, it was so good. And then as I was going through those, then I started bringing up other questions. Like I said to him, um, I've put myself in a victim role. Why was I so stupid? Like, oh, and as I said that, like, you know, it, it really struck me. Why was I so stupid in that situation or the other situation? And he said, okay, when a question comes up, then you figure out what the negative thought is that goes with that. And you put that over on the other sheet. <laughs> so it was something like, I was so stupid. That's a negative thought. So I went and wrote that down, you know, and that's upsetting to me like a hundred because I don't want to be stupid. <laughs> right? Okay. So that's what we did. And then as we were getting ready to close up, I'm going to turn over to where my have my homework assignment I have a whole page of homework <laughs> and I have never been so excited in my life to do homework I left school and all that but homework I didn't love this homework it's bringing me relief it's unlocking so much that has just been sitting inside of me and I want you to feel the same relief like I'm so excited about it okay so what my jobs are is I'm going to continue the positive reframe. I'm going to go through the rest of my emotions. Um, so in, inferior, lonely, frustrated, and angry are my other four. I'm going to go through those and I'm going to answer, how does this help me to feel this way? And what values are being reflected in these feelings? And I'm going to make a list of all of those. Probably spend a good 20, 30 minutes on that part. Then I'm going to go through the other three areas of my life that we never even got to today because we just focused on one. He's like, I think you're going to notice some themes. <laughs> like you get this big one done, then the other ones. Same thing with organizing your house. Like you get one room organized and you figure out, oh, this is what I'm doing. I'm always piling things. I'm always sticking things here. We don't have routines in place. <laughs> and then you go figure out how you can do that in the other rooms. It won't be that hard. So it was like we did a lot of this, like the bulk work today. But the other is I feel totally hopeful because I know how to do it now. And it was helpful and I feel more confident doing it myself. So I'm going to go through the other three areas of my life. But then this is the part that I just want to share with you today. 
He said, sometimes when you're feeling stressed or anxious, the response from people around you who love you is something like, don't worry about it. Let it go. This shouldn't concern you. There's no reason you need to feel that way. And when I heard him say that, I'm like, I have totally said that to people in my life. I've said that to our children. You know, they're worried about something. Oh, you don't need to be worried, you know, or they feel really concerned. Oh, there's no reason to feel concerned. And he said, that's what's so different about this team CBD. And he said, this is why the process we're going through is so important because we need to honor the emotions that are behind all of this. And we need to honor the part of us that is reluctant to push the magic button. Whatever's causing you to hesitate and not want to just say, oh, let it go, forget it. We need to honor that because when you honor those emotions, then you pave the way to actually heal. And he said, okay, think about when you had a two-year-old. Let's say you and your two-year-old are walking on the sidewalk in a major city near you. And what would you be doing? Would you hold your two-year-old's hand while you're walking? And I said, well, of course. When Spencer was two, we had to have him on one of those leashes because he was a runner and it was crazy. We had code yellows in Target multiple times. We lost this little boy because he was just a runner. So anytime we were in public, I had to hold his hand, of course. So I was telling him that. And he said, okay, what if I came up to you and I said, just let go. Why are you holding on? Just let go. He's like, you'd probably punch me, right? (laughs) Well, yes, because if I let go of him, it meant I wanted him to basically run in the street and I would be killing my son. Like that's, that's what that would mean to me. And he said, what happens is there's a reason why you're holding on to this stress. There's a reason why you're holding on to these emotions. And if I just come to you and say, let go, it's all your values and your reasons that I'm basically saying are worthless and they're wrong or they don't matter. And that really struck a chord with me because I thought, yes, there are serious reasons. And I have a whole page already showing them (laughs) what they're just sharing with you. I have a lot of reasons why it's good for me to feel anxious or guilty or inferior or whatever. Like there's a lot of good behind that. Same thing with you. If you're feeling this stress or overwhelm, there's some really good reasons behind it. I found that most people who say they're hoarders actually are the most compassionate, responsible people I've ever met. They want to have a lot of resources and things around them in case anyone were to ever need it. They want to be available to people. They want to make sure they never leave anyone hanging. So they hold on to everything because they care and they're compassionate and the memories matter, right? You, you don't want to get rid of that goodness. You don't want to get rid of that beauty. Same thing with emotional care. So I feel like what I'm learning how to do emotionally is declutter that. <laughs> Just like I'm already good at decluttering physical space, but it's this emotional space I haven't learned. And then what we're going to do in our next session is we're going to talk about the magic dial. Because once we've done the positive reframe and we understand all these good reasons, we're going to say, okay, instead of just going to zero, which is what I put before, my goal was just zero for all of the negative emotions. Instead of zero, we're going to just turn down (laughs) the dial and say how much sadness would be appropriate in this situation. You know, there's good reasons to feel sad. But maybe it doesn't need to be 50% or 100%. Maybe it could be like 5% and I'd be okay with that. Or maybe it's good for me to feel a little anxiety, you know, but maybe 10% or something like that. So it gives your brain the ability to say, I'm honoring the parts of me that are feeling this way, but I don't want it to be debilitating and I don't want it to weigh me down. I don't want it to stop me from all this other stuff. So we're going to talk about the magic dial instead of the magic button, which it's so fun because I've heard this happen so many times as I've been listening to all these podcasts. And then we're going to just, um, then at that point, that's like the agenda setting where you decide what you're going for, because then when your brain really wants it, then you're ready to go into the methods. And that's where we're going to talk about, um, like the externalization of voices or there's exposure. And so I'm going to go read the book when panic attacks again. And it's like, I've never had a panic attack where like I can't breathe, but 
you know, I feel anxious, so that's why it's going to be helpful. And so I'm going to go through and read that book again, look through all the methods, and then come back and say, here's the methods I want to try. What's beautiful about this process is there never needs to be resistance. Like, I'm not resisting any of this. It's no one trying to change me. It's me working myself out of this, like, prison I've put my brain into. So I am so excited. I'm going to work on this. I might even spend some more time this afternoon on it. I'm going to go through and really write these things down. And I'm going to go through the book and I'm going to figure out my next steps. And um, anyway, I'm just, I'm so grateful and so happy and so excited. And I'm not quite like done with this process yet, (laughs) but I feel so good. I'm so happy. Okay. I think I've said enough. Okay, closing up now, um, and we will follow up. (laughs) I will follow up again soon. All right, I'm back. It is now Thursday, May 16th, 2019, and I really want to get this podcast published because I think it's long enough and has a lot of good information, but I wanted to give a quick recap about what has happened in the past couple of weeks since my last recording. Actually, right after I did that middle recording, I published a post on social media and just explaining I'm very excited. I'm sharing a little bit about what I'm doing to declutter emotionally and overcome anxiety, and I can't wait to share it with you. And there were so many responses from people saying, I'm going through this too. I really can't wait. I need help as well. So I want to get this out there. And I'm sure I'll be talking more about our mental health and how to really arise. I hope we get to launch that program soon. It's in my heart, but right now we're working on our 25,000 command centrals, so we're staying focused. But let me just go ahead and share with you a little bit about what I did afterwards. I just went back and listened to those first two parts as I was getting ready this morning, and I was kind of laughing because I used the word, I'm the phrase, I'm so excited (laughs) so many times. And I think you can probably tell that it made a huge impact on me. I feel actually just as excited, not quite as hyper right now, but I feel extremely excited because this has made a huge difference in my life. And it's not just a temporary thing. This is long term. Same thing with what we're doing in our steps to everyday productivity program. This is not just a quick fix or a temporary fix that we're trying to help people to get. It's a long term change in how we process information and how we organize our things and how we move through life. So my enthusiasm was totally genuine, and I'm so, so grateful for that coaching session. I did actually complete some of my homework. I haven't finished all of it, but I want to explain why. First of all, I went through just, we had those four parts that I had outlined that I was feeling overwhelmed about. I went through all of the thoughts and feelings on one of the parts. So the other three I still haven't done. But the themes really do carry through. And I found, like, under the lonely part, I realized I have been blocking myself off from friendships because I had this belief that being friends with me is a hard thing (laughs) because I like to read so much and I like to talk about things that are kind of not what most people talk about. I don't know. And so I just realized there are all these things I've been doing in my head that have been causing a lot of the challenges that I've been having. And sometimes it is hard to look at yourself and say, wow, I really am the cause (laughs) of a lot of what I'm struggling with. But I think it's also very empowering because then you can see how you also can be the solution. And the other three areas, I still wanna work through and go through them thought by thought and line by line, but they don't feel as painful anymore as they did. In fact, before I had this coaching call, My head was constantly cycling through some of these challenges, and now it's actually not at all. I'm not even thinking about them very often, and that's been amazing. I mean, if right now you're in the middle of what I was in, where there's things that are stressing you out and it just cycles in your brain, can you imagine your brain feeling totally calm? Same thing where I used to have my to-do list going through my brain, and now it doesn't anymore because I have my step command central in place. Same thing. This is actually doing something very similar to that. Okay, I did get the audiobook for When Panic Attacks. I've had the uh, paperback book, which is awesome. And I think you need both, to be honest, but the audiobook is great because you can listen while you're laying down for a rest, you can listen while you're doing work, you can put in, you know, earplugs or not, sorry, earphones while you're, you know, blow drying your hair or something like that. But the audiobook is awesome. So I do recommend if you are struggling with anxiety or with your moods, 
going through that book, When Panic Attacks by David Burns is great. And I'll have a link to it on the show notes page as well. And I am considering doing another session, like I mentioned, but life has been so full. I mean, the past couple of weeks, it has been seriously nonstop. We had two of our children had birthdays. Eric and I had a conference that we attended with Aaliyah for the business. I've been trying to coordinate a lot of details. Our business has had more tech problems than ever before, where our system just stopped sending to anyone with a Yahoo address or a Hotmail address. So if that was you, I'm really sorry. We're working on that. And things have just broken. And so <laughs> even when people want to come into our program, there have been some struggles. So there's been a lot happening behind the scenes to keep all of this going. And Eric and I are teaching our live classes. We're still running the business, which they're awesome. It's just, there's a, there's a lot happening behind the scenes. We've also been going through some teenager issues where I thought maybe we were going to get through life without any of those. <laughs> I just won't comment right now. But I will say things are moving in a good direction. I have more to say on that in a second. But I also just want to comment that because I'm going through this cognitive therapy and because I'm training my brain how to look at these negative thoughts in a new light and be able to see the distortions and quickly switch those, my brain has gone out of stress mode and panic mode and has started shifting into problem solving mode. And even this morning, Eric and I were on a walk. We were talking about like 10 friction points in our lives right now. And we're like, how do we solve these? What do we do to make these better? And we couldn't come up with anything. And then I just said, you know what? What if we had some solution finding meetings and we invited our children and we went through just one or two of these at a time and we involved them in helping us find the solutions? How would that be? And both of us just thought, yeah, you know what? That actually would be a great idea because they need to learn how to solve problems and we need them to actually help be part of the solution. So we're feeling very excited about that. We'll have to uh, report back on how that goes in the future. I've also, I'm signing up for a new program on raising teenagers and I ordered a couple new books. You know, I'm always loving reading books. So I'm reading, you know, like three books right now. <laughs> they're really good, but they're helping me. And I feel more optimistic because when you're sitting in the middle of problems and you feel like you wake up in the morning and you're thinking, oh, <laughs> is anything going right? Well, first of all, a lot of things are going right. Second, problems are part of life. And that's what helps us to be able to get stronger and wiser and to learn, do, and become. And getting good at solving problems, something that I want to have, I, I want to have that skill. And I want to teach our children how to do that as well. And I even had an amazing experience with one of our children. I won't say which gender or <laughs> which child it was. But this particular child was feeling extremely stressed about an event. It was a new experience. It felt scary. And this child was very anxious. So I, I thought, okay, I'm not a therapist and I'm not a coach, but I've learned enough about this. I think I could be helpful. So I brought the child into my little office area and we sat down with a piece of paper and a pen and went through the same practice that I just explained where we identified what the feelings were, we identified the negative thoughts, we talked about the positive reframe, what that really meant. Then we did some of the methods I've been learning in When Panic Attacks about, we did an externalization of voices where you kind of pretend like you're talking to another person who's going through the same thing, just like you. And we talked about how to identify distortions. And after about 30 minutes, my child went from feeling, you know, 60 to 80% anxious to zero or maybe like 10 percent because you know it's a new thing so there was still a good reason to feel some you know nervousness but it went all the way down and watching my child put zeros in all of these areas you know of anger frustration hopelessness all that seeing it go from somewhere between 30 to 80 percent all the way down to zero to you know 10 percent it was amazing I hear so many parents who have children who are struggling with depression or anxiety and they don't know what to do about it or teenagers who are acting out. And when you realize that whenever someone's acting out, it's typically because some communication isn't happening. There are some feelings that are in there that aren't being expressed. So I feel extremely hopeful that as I learn how to continue processing my emotions, then I'm going to be helping teach this to our children. And then hopefully you guys can learn this in your life and teach this to your children. These are skills that we just never learned when we were growing up. 
And I'm thrilled about this. Okay, so let's close up now, but your takeaway, the learn, do, become challenge, which we're trying to kind of sum everything up. I want you to prioritize your mental health. I believe that when you are strong mentally, it's going to have an impact on every other area of your life. There was even someone who posted in our Step Mastery Facebook group the other day saying, why do I feel so panicked when I go to organize my stuff? I even feel stressed cleaning. And I'm guessing there's some hidden emotion there. There's some anxiety and there's some feelings that are deep down that maybe this person doesn't even acknowledge. When you learn how to think clearly, it's going to have an impact on you and your family and future generations and really the world. The best book that I know of right now is When Panic Attacks by Dr. David Burns. There's a mood log in there. I know if you Google it, you can see examples. People have filled them out and put them online so you can just kind of see what it looks like. His book, Feeling Good, I think is more for depression. And then When Panic Attacks is more for anxiety. Both are excellent. And I have the audiobooks and the paperback books for both. They're awesome. Also, I recorded two podcasts with Dr. Burns. One was with Power of Moms Radio and one was with Learn to Become Radio. So you can either Google those or we'll put them on the show notes page. I'll make a quick note of that. And that's going to also really help you with STEP and with your command central. We are so thrilled about this 25,000 command central challenge. Really, if just everybody who bought the program built their command central, we'd already have it done. So we were in the middle of that. But we've been getting them coming in, which is amazing. Go to learndobecome.com forward slash step 25k for step 25,000. And you can learn more about that. I want the world to be able to experience relief. I know maybe it sounds a little pie in the sky, but I've talked before about how I feel it's my mission to help people to stop feeling overwhelmed. And the way we've been doing that up to this point is focusing on your tasks and projects and visual clutter and just getting life working again, which I love. But adding in this other element of this mental health, oh, I just think it's going to be even more powerful. And then as we continue to grow, Arise is the program that we want to build eventually where we're not just talking about organization, but we're talking about how we're going to take what's feeling overwhelming and then how we're going to apply it to strengthening our families and living our purpose and really being able to live this life we feel we were created to live. So make sure you stay close here at Learn Do Become. Come to our show notes page and we'll have links to everything that we're working on. Thank you for all the wonderful things that you're doing in your family. We're excited to see you soon. Okay, have a great day.